we've got real security challenges in this country. There's no doubt that Al-Qaeda is still seeking to do us harm, and, and our allies are. There is no doubt that countries like North Korea and Iran pose a potential threat to us. But let's be clear, the threat that we face now is nowhere as dire as it was during the Cold War. Uh, we shouldn't be governed by fear. We should be smart and tough and strategic in dealing with these issues. But we shouldn't allow our politics to be driven simply by uh, the fear of terrorism. And that's part of what has distorted, I think, our politics over the last several years. Here's, here's what we need to do. Number one, we need to end our combat role in Iraq. We've got to get our troops out by next year. Some of those troops we're going to have to deploy to Afghanistan because Afghanistan is slipping back into Taliban control. It's also spilling over, by the way, into Pakistan, which is an enormous threat to us because Pakistan has a lot of nuclear weapons already. We're worrying about Iran or Iraq. Pakistan has huge numbers of nuclear weapons, and it's becoming uh, increasingly problematic because of the fact that we didn't pay enough attention the Taliban is getting stronger along that border. We need to strengthen our intelligence and our human intelligence. You know, we don't have enough Arab speakers in all our intelligence operations. And that is how generally you prevent terrorist activity from taking place. The British are much better at this than we are. We've got to start making those investments. Uh, we're going to have to clamp down on the financial networks that are funding terrorism. All those things are critical. And we've got to invest in homeland security. Our chemical plants are still not as secure as they need to be. We, there are chemical plants just out in places like New Jersey where if you had an explosion in a chlorine plant, hundreds of thousands of people could be killed at once. I mean, it could be as devastating as any kind of biochemical uh, attack. So those are all steps that we've got to take. What we shouldn't be doing, though, is continuing to uncritically look at a Pentagon budget that is still skewed towards fighting a Cold War. And so just to take one example on, on the issue of nuclear weapons, we should be pursuing an aggressive policy of nuclear non-proliferation around the world. That includes getting Iran to stand down in terms of its nuclear weapons, getting North Korea to stand down on term, in terms of their nuclear weapons, but it also means us restarting conversations with Russia about how can we reduce our nuclear stockpiles, which could save us money over the long term, make us safer, and we could take some of those investments, first of all to pay for veterans who are coming back from Iran and Afghanistan and are still having to uh, wait six to months to a year to 18 months for their payments, uh, we still don't have proper mental health services and post-traumatic stress disorder. So we could use some of that money just to help troops who are already serving America, and we could also potentially take some of that money and make sure that we're meeting some of our domestic priorities. So we can be smart and tough and potentially reduce some of our spending on old weapon systems, focusing on our new threats and our new challenges.